Hello people, it is the Boxing Librarian. Welcome back to my latest video. I'm still struggling to talk a little bit. It's been very problematic having this molar out. Um, but I'm doing my next video following on from Jim McLaren and I thought it were time, you know, with the Jim McLaren, we want to get back to some career breakdowns, talking some old fighters as well. I'll be doing some videos on some modern fighters, um, also going forwards as I prepare to start my new videos. But let us talk about the Black Panther. Black Panther Harry Wills, who to me, He's one of my um, um, heavyweights I'm most intrigued by. Um, went unknown for a long time in boxing, didn't really get the respect he deserved um, for being the fantastic fighter that he was. Um, now, Harry Wills' initial pro debut is still disputed by some. Some people cite a source in 1909, others kind of go with 1911 date. I'll go by the 1911 date. Um, there was actually another... Um, wills around that time um, I have not nailed down this 1909 fight um, and it's not for like a train so I will go by the 1911 fight for now now Harry Wills in his first four years as a pro okay 1911 12 13 14 okay they were really his breakout years um, as I will go through he had he had nearly 30 fights in that time he had nearly 30 fights in his first four years as a pro and already um, like many other um, great fighters of this time he fought stiff competition in his first four years as a pro you know starting out one of his major fights he started out with a lot of um, knockouts knocking out a lot of his earlier opponents you know and it was basically it just into 1913 when he fought the great joplin ghost jeff clark who had a fantastic jab fantastic move a quick hands um often fought bigger men and was an excellent fighter it should be a hall of famer for me um jeff clark only had seven defeats in over 100 fights he had nearly 50 knockouts um you know that fight was a draw on points over 10 rounds now interestingly harry wills Harry Wills' career, the Great Black Panther's career, is a career of two halves, okay? Now, two fights later, after fighting the great Joplin Ghost Jeff Clark, one of the great unsung black fighters of the time and a, a fantastic fighter, two fights later, he went in with an already aging Joe Jeanette. This was in 1913. Now, Harry Wills could only get a draw on points over eight rounds um, against the fantastic um, heavyweight Hall of Famer. Um, Joe Jeanette, um, you know, he'd had a real tough career. He'd fought multiple times with Johnson, McVeigh, Langford by this time. You know, he'd also scored a lot of brutal wins himself you know he had over 50 knockouts at this time nearly 80 wins from over 100 fights you know Joe Jeanette even when aging and even leaving his prime was still a formidable force to get round now this is also um Harry Wills' first fight against a Hall of Fame fighter um but he did not get the win okay he got the draw now when I mentioned about Harry Wills' career being in two halves you will see as I go through now he gets a draw there with Joe Jeanette then he goes on a bit of a knockout run knocking out three opponents on trot and then he goes in with another legend okay who only had nine defeats in nearly 140 fights um with over 100 wins and nearly 16 ko's on a win run okay the great boston bone crusher himself sam langford and sam langford and joe Jeanette and another great name i'll get to soon they were partially responsible for turning wills into the fighter he became in my mind from everything i've read because harry wills was quite ungainly in his early career he was big he was strong muscular as you can see on the picture he was very athletic he was a giant of a man um for his time he was six foot three weighed anything in his prime between 220 and 230 pounds started out a bit lighter than that but you know would often come in at those weights in his prime and he really became a wrecking machine and it was partially i always say down to these fights up until the end of 1914 were fighters like langford Jeanette, jeff clark etc etc you know fighting these highly skilled fighters taught harry wills a lot and he became a formidable fighter now, interestingly, the Sam Langford fight, also like the first Joe Jeanette fight, was a draw, okay? But even drawing with a fighter like Sam Langford in 1914, who was kind of getting to edge of his prime, 1915 were kind of last year of his prime, and from 1916 on, it was a downward spiral. But, you know, it was a draw, but still a good result against Sam Langford, considering Harry Wills had not had 20 fights yet, fighting a near 140 fight, murderous puncher in Sam Langford, who'd knocked out you know, dozens of fighters at heavyweight. Now, after fighting Sam Langford, he goes straight back in for a second fight with the great Joe Jeanette, who also was on a win run. Um, you know, Joe Jeanette, had, like I said last time, he had over 50 knockouts, over 80 wins. Um, he has by now, he's fought more since fighting Wills last time. That fight is a draw as well. Now, interestingly, Harry Wills could never beat um, Joe Jeanette in his prime. Okay, he could never beat Joe Jeanette in his prime. 
You know, part of the reason for that was Joe Jeanette was such an excellent fighter. He was a real veteran. He was just one of those fighters that, you know, was hard to beat. Even, you know, fighting prime Sam Langford, even fighting prime Sam McVeigh, and even gave difficult fights to Jack Johnson just after he turned pro. So Harry Wolves were really up against it, fighting fighters like Joe Jeanette, Sam Langford, Jeff Clark, you know, inside 20 fights as a pro. But, you know, I argue that this partially is the reason that Harry Wills became the fighter he became. You know, when you're fighting a small pocket rocket who can knock you out cold with one shot like Sam Langford, or fighting a more rangy, um, jabbing, moving machine with knockout power in both hands, Joe Jeanette scored like 70 knockouts in his career. He had way more knockouts than Marciano had fights. You know, so fighting these opponents of differing styles, you know, Harry Wills picked up a lot of tricks and traits. He learned a lot by fighting these fighters. Now, interestingly, following on from the two draws with Langford and Jeanette, he then goes on a bit of a win run, okay? He wins eight fights on the trot, okay? He knocks out most of them. Um, you know, he beats Willie Meehan, of course. Um, this was in 1914. He also fights a number of fighters, um, scoring a number of knockouts included in that. Now, interestingly, as we get towards the end of 1914, okay, Harry Wills goes back in um, with the Boston Bone Crusher, Sam Langford. Now, interestingly, Langford has now had over 140 fights. He's nearly on 150 fights, and he's approaching 70 knockouts with nearly 110 wins. Now, this is the fight where Langford knocks Wills out cold. This was the fight, the 14th round knockout, where basically Harry Wills over the first eight rounds due to putting Langford down um, in the early rounds. Langford sprained his ankle. He was a bit immobile for the next two or three rounds, but by round eight, you know, I've told this story before. Langford's spraying were working out and he started to attack Wills, jumping inside, firing off um, combinations of punches. And he started actually bullying Wills back and ending up with that fatalistic, you know, left, right, and then big sweeping left hand, knocking Harry Wills clean out. You know, it was a brutal knockout. You know, Harry Wills said he thought he'd been shot. You know, the punch came with such speed and ferocity from Langford. He just didn't know what had happened. So there was a knockout loss after earlier drawing with Sam Langford. Harry Wills is knocked out cold. Now, his final fight in 1914 is against another of the great heavyweights of the, you know, Golden Four, the Fearsome Four, the Great Quartet. And this was Sam McVeigh. Okay, Sam McVeigh had 10 defeats in nearly 70 fights. He had nearly 50 KOs. He also was on a win run. In this fight, Sam McVeigh, for the first number of rounds, fought in sporadic bursts like he could do. But then he started bullying Wills. He had Wills badly hurt in 12th round, 13th round. He had him hurt again in the later rounds. Didn't finish him. Wills went on the retreat. But this shows how great these fighters were, like Lamford and McVeigh, that they could fight. Such a big man who, you know, by now was approaching 30 fights. But he was so big and athletic and strong. You know, relatively inexperienced compared to them. You know, when McVeigh's had multiple battles with Langford and Jack Johnson and Joe Jeanette, he builds up a lot of experience and knows how to use his tools. But, you know, Harry Wills lost that fight on points over 20 rounds. Now, the career of two halves I talk about is we're going from 1915 now um, into 1915. And interestingly, this is kind of on the edge of Langford's prime. McVeigh has definitely left his prime by now. Jeanette has also left his prime. But those rough, tough early battles against those incredible, you know, heavyweight greats, you know, they really gave Wolves a lot of experience. He had to learn that he could be offensive. He had to learn to fight on the defensive, as he did when Langford were pressing him in 1914, as he did when McVeigh was jumping into him, launching those brutal knockout hooks that McVeigh could throw, especially that vaunted left hook of his, that he could time and actually bust you up really bad with. And Harry Wills picked up a lot of experience in that time. You know, into 1915, he beats John Lester Johnson on points, then fights Sam McVeigh again, um, losing... Um, the second fight on the trot to the Hall of Fame heavyweight Sam McVeigh. He then fights battling Jim Johnson, okay, winning on points over 10 rounds. Now, battling Jim Johnson um, was not one of the great heavyweights, but what battling Jim was is a really tough, durable, very physically powerful heavyweight. He wasn't the most skilled fighter. He wasn't the heaviest puncher. He could punch with very heavy authority. He could knock you out if you could catch her. But he was very tough and durable. Six foot three, he could weigh up to 240 pounds. And when you get a big man like that was very durable, you know, again, they are very good learning fights. Now, after beating battling Jim Johnson, he then goes on a five fight run. The first of them 
is a third fight with Sam McVeigh. Now, this time in 1915, following two defeats, um, Harry Wills actually beats Sam McVeigh. He scores his first win over the now past prime Hall of Fame heavyweight Sam McVeigh, um, avenging one of his earlier two wins. And he closes out 1915 in his last fight by fighting Sam Langford, who has now had nearly 160 fights. Um, and finally, on his third attempt, uh, third attempt he gains a win um, over the great Boston Bone Crusher. Now, interestingly, following on that, three more fights with Sam Langford follow going into 1916. The first one, Harry Wills wins, winning a second one on the trot on points over 20 rounds. And then, of course, Sam Langford turns the trick and knocks Harry Wills out cold in the 19th round. You know, so this shows basically, I'll recap in a second, um, following that fight where Sam Langford knocks out Harry Wills, Harry Wills fights him again, beating him on points over 10 rounds. In fact, let's go to end of 1916, um, an incredibly tough year. He then beats John Lester Johnson again, um, as he did in the preceding year. And then he goes back in with Sam Langford again, who's now again on a win run. Um, he's got now got 17 knockouts in nearly 120 wins. Harry Wills wins on points. And then he follows that with another very tough fight against the Joplin Ghost, Jeff Clark, um, who has only 10 defeats in nearly 140 fights. Now, amazingly enough, um, you know, he goes on, he beats George Kikotton a few times inside the distance, beats Big Bill Tate, a future favourite sparring partner of Jack Johnson, um, because he was virtually six foot five, he was a giant man, um, and Jack Dempsey actually, Jack Dempsey, sorry, Jack Dempsey actually used him in sparring, um, and one of the main times was to spar, get him ready for a giant six plus footer Jess Willard. Now, interestingly, Harry Wills beats Jack Thompson two more times um, to close out 1916. Now, in 1916, following on from the two fights at the end of 1915, um, the win over McVeigh and Langford, then in 1916, he fights Sam Langford winning on points, gets knocked out by Sam Langford, comes back and beats Sam Langford on points, then he beats Sam Langford on points, then beats Jeff Clark. That is all in one year with other fights around that, okay? With other fights around that. Now, into 1917, he fights battling Jim Johnson again, loses by TKO in the second round. Now, a number of people wondered what happened when Wills pulled out of the fight. Um, but actually, when he had it checked afterwards, he had a very severe fracture in his wrist. And every time he hit with it, he would get an incredible pain searing up his arm. So, Harry Wills came out of that fight due to the injury. He came back against Jack Thompson, beating him on points over 10 rounds in 1917. And then he fought Sam Langford again, who again was on a win run. He was on a three-fight win run. Harry Wills beat him on points over six rounds. Now, Harry Wills has been through some fight runs already, you know. At the end of 1915, he fought McVeigh and Langford. Um, into 1916, he had three straight fights for Langford, then two fights later fought Langford, then fight after that fought Jeff Clark. He's had some tough runs, okay, Harry Wills. But this little run is incredible, okay. From beating Sam Langford on points when he went on that three-fight win run, Harry Wills then fights battling Jim again, beating him on points over 10 rounds. Now... You know, being Sam Langford, Jim Johnson, he then goes on to Sam Langford again, where he wins on points over 10 rounds. Then he fights Sam Langford again. All these fights are on the trot. Sam Langford battling Jim Johnson, Sam Langford, Sam Langford. He gets a draw with Sam Langford, 1917 on points over 12 rounds. The next fight he has is, is against the Joplin Ghost, Jeff Clark who has 15 defeats in nearly 150 fights. He has nearly 70 knockouts. He stops Jeff Clark inside the distance. Then he knocks out Sam McVeigh on a nine-fight win run in five rounds. Then he knocks out Sam Langford. All these fights are on the trot. Then he knocks out Sam Langford, who has 20 defeats, okay, in nearly 190 fights. Then he beats Sam Langford again, okay. Then he beats Sam McVeigh on points over 20 rounds, albeit a very old Sam McVeigh. And then he beats Jeff Clark. So just taking that run, Harry Wills in 1917 into 1918, okay, all these fights on the trot, fights Sam Langford, battling Jim Johnson, Sam Langford, Sam Langford, Jeff Clark, Sam McVeigh, Sam Langford, Sam Langford, Sam McVeigh, Jeff Clark. All on the trot, okay? That is what you call a tough fight run. Some of these fights went 12 rounds. Some of them went 10 rounds. One of them went 20 rounds. 
And fighting Sam McV, even an older Sam McV, for 20 rounds is no easy task, uh, believe you me. Now, interestingly, this takes Harry Wills into his um, year 1918, okay? Towards the end of 1918, he beats Jeff Clark, okay? Um, in nearly his 60th pro fight. To close out 1918, he then beats Jack Thompson. Now, 1918, 1917 to 1918 is also an interesting time for Harry Wills because Harry Wills goes on an incredible unbeaten run, okay, um, that I will mention. Now, interestingly, right up until, okay, right up until 1921, okay, when he loses to Bill Tate, okay, Harry Wills has not lost a fight for virtually four years. And in that four years, okay, in that four years, he has gone unbeaten in nearly 40 fights in four years. Now, that is incredible enough, but when you are fighting Sam Langford multiple times, although an aging Langford now, you're fighting Jeff Clark, you're fighting battling Jim Johnson, you know, and you're also destroying fighters, okay? Some of these wins are destructive blowouts. The thing is about Harry Wills, I always say that, you know, he had traits, okay? He had size, strength, length, agility, um, for a big man, he had um, an athleticism, but fighting those battles against those Hall of Fame heavyweights like Jeanette, McVeigh, Langford, you know, where he's in, he couldn't beat Jeanette in two attempts, you know, he lost to McVeigh first time getting bullied, you know, he drew one and lost to Sam Langford, you know, including getting knocked out cold and Langford knocked him out again later, but all of these tough fights, okay, Really built up Harry Wills' experience. You know, leaving 1918 into 1919, he beats John Lester Johnson again. Then 1919, he beats Sam Langford again. Then he beats Jeff Clark, okay, in four rounds. And then he beats Sam Langford again. Beats a very aged Joe Jeanette. And then beats Sam Langford again. Now, interestingly, into 1919, Harry Wills is in his prime. He actually entered his prime. You know, to me, more towards the end of 1917, up until 1922, that is pretty much Harry Wills in his prime. And for those five years, he's almost mercurial, okay? He's gained experience from those early brutal wars with Langford, McVeigh and Jeanette. And he has actually now become a formidable fighting machine. Now, in the gap between fighters, where basically, you know, um, Jack Johnson had gone, he'd been defeated by Willard, you know, awaiting Jack Dempsey, you know, um, Langford, Jeanette and McVeigh were aging. Harry Wills was the great heavyweight who came into that scene. And in his prime, he was near unbeatable in those years 1917 to 1922 you know after beating Sam Langford in 1919 um, you know he goes on he destroys Ole Anderson in three rounds I mean he really puts an absolute whipping on him he brutally knocks out Andy Johnson in one round in 1920 you know into 1920 he also beats Sam Langford again on points over 15 rounds and then a few fights later okay um, just passing his 70th fight um, in 1920 Harry Wills fights a near 70 fight veteran who was on a 19 fight win run his record is 60 wins 7 losses 1 draw he has 48 knockouts and this is the 6 foot 6 giant puncher Fred Fulton who around the time of 1919-1920 was regarded as one of the best heavyweights in the world behind Dempsey and Wills you know some people even said that if Dempsey and Wills weren't there Fred Fulton would probably have ruled that um, era until the next great heavyweight came along now Fred Fulton were on a 19 fight win run now first round Wills came out put an absolute licking on him you know Fred Fulton um, in second round started taking another licking but about halfway through second round you know he started firing lots of body attacks at Wills and heavy punches to head trying to force Wills back and trying to get himself into a fight Wills absolutely powdered him in first round we're powdering him in second round this is Wills in his prime but you know Fred Fulton makes a good go of it in second round in third round Fulton comes out again fighting well Wills is trying to get rid of him and they go into a clinch you know it's that move where Wills pulls his right leg back gains space to land a chopping right hand on inside and then he steps back fully and fires an uppercut okay and this uppercut knocks Six foot six Fred Fulton out cold. Okay, this one uppercut, the chopping right hand on the inside, you know, Will's got space, then step back to game range and bang. One tremendous uppercut shatters Fulton's chin. You know, accounts of the fight say that Fred Fulton's shoulders hit the floor before his, you know, um, rear, rear ended, basically. Um, you know, Fred Fulton just was caked 
out. But, you know, this was Harry Wills. He was in his prime. He was destroying people. You know, he beats Jeff Clark in four rounds. Jeff Clark lost a lot of his later fights. Um, in his earlier fights, as you saw, in over 100 fights, he'd only lost seven. But he did lose more of his later fights. 1921, he knocks out Big Bill Tate, the six foot five giant, in two rounds. Then he knocks out Jeff Clark in two rounds. And, I mean, the difference in Wills, you know, in one of the earlier Jeff Clark fights, you know, them fights were fairly competitive. In one of the later fights, you know, J Jeff Clark had to use all his speed and mobility and defensive skill to survive. Wills was absolutely on the ball and looking to knock him out. And Jeff Clark went the distance but had to use every grain of soul he had um, to avoid being knocked out. Now, after beating Jeff Clark in two rounds in 1921, Harry Wills goes on a mini run, knocking nearly all, all of the opponents out before he fights Big Bill Tate again, um, knocking him out in six rounds. Now, already in 1921 of the Great Black Panther's career, he then fights um, Ed Gumbo Smith who has beat more Hall of Famers than Manny Pacquiao, interestingly enough, including Jess Willard, Battling Levinsky, and more. Okay, but Ed Gumbo Smith, you know, late in his career, knocked out in one round, okay, knocked out in just over a minute, okay? And this was very, very um, Fred Fulton-like. Basically, Harry Wills fighting Langford, who was very small, you know, had speed and mobility and could jump inside and fire shots, really taught Wills how to maintain a range. Okay, many of his later fights were Langford. He peppered him at range with them long thudding left jabs and right hands. You know, he'd step in from outside with uppercuts. He learned after being knocked out twice by Langford to fight at a range. Also against McVeigh when McVeigh in that first fight were bullying him around, repeatedly hurting him, even though McVeigh was five inches shorter than him. You know, McVeigh just had the power and, and the confidence to steam into him and let shots go. And, you know, Wills developed a very, very good style of being able to fight at a range and maintain a range while destroying you from outside. Now, you know, Gumbo Smith fell to this, okay? Just over a minute, a massive uppercut, and Gumbo Smith was completely knocked out, okay, in just over a minute. Now, Gumbo Smith was six foot two and a half heavyweight. It was later in his career, but you know, Harry Wills dispatched him, and I mean brutally. Uppercut from the outside. This was not, you know, the uppercut he Fulton with where he was on the inside you know, launch that chopping shot to gain space so he could step back and step in with uppercut. This was an uppercut from the outside. Wills timed it, stepped in, throwing a huge uppercut. It landed on Gumbo's chin and he was knocked unconscious. You know, reports actually say that, you know, he was totally starched out. Now, after that, um, Harry Wills, who was in destructive mode, fights Denver Ed Martin, okay? Denver Ed Martin. Now, Harry Wills knocks Denver Ed Martin down um, six times in two minutes in the first round, okay? Completely destroys Denver Ed Martin. Then he goes on a run of fights with Big Bill Tate, okay? He beats him in 1921 on points over 12 rounds. Um, he then loses by DQ um, before fighting Big Bill Tate again. He then comes into another fight with Sam Langford. This is in 1922. Langford is on a win run of a few fights, but not against great opposition. Harry Wills beats Langford on points over 10 rounds. And then he launches into another three fights. Now, this one with Kid Norfolk is, again, another brutal early knockout. Kid Norfolk was a feared fighter of his time. He is a Hall of Famer. He was on a win run. You know, Harry Wills, the punch that actually finished Kid Norfolk, a lot of people at ringside said they didn't see it. But a few did, because they had an angle. And actually, Wills, who also was an excellent inside fighter, um, you know, he was good at hitting and gaining a range, and he was good at stepping back, you know, to gain range to land powerful shots. And he did that with Kid Norfolk. You know, in a clinch in second round, you know, Harry Wills hit him with a, a chopping left hook on the inside. And then what Wills did is, that gave him then, you know, the, just the, the, the natural one or two seconds, hit him with that chopping left, Gained a little bit of space and then smacked him with a chopping right. And, you know, people at ringside said Kid Norfolk just fell like a tree. You know, the punch was short but powerful with Wills' entire leverage behind it. And the punch just knocked Kid Norfolk clean out. You know, he was absolutely starched. Following that, he had two more fights with Jeff Clark, scoring early knockouts, and then goes into a bit of a mini run. By this time, Harry Wills is chasing a fight with Jack Dempsey. He'd been chasing a fight with Jack Dempsey now for three years, you know, since 1919, ever since Dempsey in his camp sent a letter to Harry Wills' management saying, we'd like, Harry, we'd like Harry Wills to come down and spar Dempsey to help Dempsey prepare for Willard. Now, Harry Wills had replied to that and said, 
I mean, I don't want to help Dempsey prepare for Willard. I'll fight both of them and knock them both out. And he refused to help the champion prepare because he said he wanted to fight the champion and knock him out and beat champion himself. So that was kind of the first major thing, even though Harry Wills called Dempsey out before that as well. And at one point called out an age Jack Johnson. You know, he never did get the Dempsey fight. He goes into fighting people like Tuck Jackson's, Homer Smith, Jack Thompson's, scoring lots of knockouts in this time. Um, he beats Bartley Madden. And then he gets a fight with a fighter who was a bit underrated, very tough guy, Luis Angel Furpo, who famously knocked Dempsey out at ring. He were top 10 rated at heavyweight. The ring ratings are now in. He were top 10 rated at heavyweight. Um, you know, he was on a win run. He had three defeats in 31 fights. He had 24 knockouts in 28 wins. Uh, in 31 wins. Uh, 28 wins, sorry. But ultimately, you know, Furpo could not beat, um, you know, Harry Wills. But Harry Wills, again, in that fight, um, to the footage on YouTube, again, you see that ability he had to step back and then suddenly hit, knocking Furpo down. You know, it was a good ability he learned in all those tough battles with Sam Langford and McVeigh and Jeanette. Now, after that, he fights Charlie Weiner, okay? He's on a seven-fight win run. Makes no difference. Harry Wills knocks him out in two rounds. And then he also knocks out Floyd Johnson in one round. But by 1925, in the last attempts, you know, over this time, from 1924 to 1925, to make the Wills-Dempsey fight. And um, I did do a hangout last year covering the Wills-Dempsey um, saga. I may do another video on that. Um, because it really is ebbs and flows from Dempsey in his camp. First, the colour line's drawn, then it's not drawn, then it is drawn, then it's not drawn, then he'll fight Wills, then he won't fight Wills, then when he draws colour line, he says, well, now I've drawn colour line, I'll say Harry Wills is a great fighter and could probably beat anybody in the world. Well, that's nice to say, Jack, after you've just said in the same article, you're drawing the colour line. Uh, but, you know, this is the time. Now, Harry Wills in 1926 fought the Boston Gob, top three rated heavyweight Jack Sharkey, of course, a former heavyweight champion and a Hall of Famer, um, and Harry Wills loses, okay, he stopped in the later rounds, and then he loses to Polino Uskodum, okay, he loses in four rounds to Polino Uskodum, the Basque woodcutter, who is also a top 10 rated heavyweight in the world, and he goes on for a number of years, he has a little mini break, comes back 1929, fights up until 1932, and interestingly, of Harry Wills' last four fights, although not against great opposition, um, you know, he did win his last four fights, and three of them, by first round knockout. Now, interestingly, you know, the great Harry Wills, the, the Black Panther, is one of boxing's great underrated heavyweights. Now, when we think about his career as a whole, you know, his record in coloured heavyweight title fights as a three-time coloured heavyweight champion with over 30 coloured heavyweight title fights and 15 knockouts in coloured heavyweight title fights, you know... Harry Wills does have a remarkable record fighting for the Coloured Heavyweight Championship. You know, having only three defeats in Coloured Heavyweight title fights in over 30 fights, he reigned supreme three times as Coloured Heavyweight Champion and he made over 20 title defences um, of the Coloured Heavyweight title. You know, in his career of over 100 fights, just over 100 fights, Harry Wills had nearly 90 wins and he scored over 50 knockouts. He beat four Hall of Famers and beat five champions. You know, of his 54 KOs, Wills was a big puncher. Big, athletic, powerful man. You know, of those 54 knockouts, 32 of them um, went inside three rounds and a massive 16 were in one round. He even scored five KOs against Hall of Famers. You know, when we think about Harry Wills' career, he's just one of those fighters who, you know, and and until we had the ability to really research properly with age of computers and, you know, um, libraries all over the world where people could go and look at archives, he really went unsung, um, except to those people who knew him and those people who kept old newspaper archives. But we are looking at one of the great heavyweights of all time. And, you know, learning in that initial period, um, like Harry Wills did, you know, from 1914, you know, 19, 14, 13, 14, 15 fighting all those fights for Langford, McVeigh and Jeanette fighting Willie Meehan, the Joplin ghost, Jeff Clark. He moulded into an incredible fighter who, after losing to Battling Jim by that second round TKO when he fractured his wrist, you know, he did not lose another fight until 1921. And even after that, you know, the one loss in 1921, it would be until 1926 that he would lose again. So basically, Harry Wills went nine years with only one defeat, okay? And that one defeat was, you know, basic... Uh, one defeat was a DQ loss, okay? In in nearly nine years, 
uh, he only had one defeat, which was a DQ class. And that shows how incredibly talented this fighter was and how he was able to take the experiences of those very brutal fights, brutal knockout losses to Langford, very physically demanding fights for Sam McVeigh and fighting old boxing masters like Joe Jeanette. You know, a guy who had a jab, you know, he could lean away from counters when he jabbed, he could move around. You know, fighting those incredible fighters and fighters like Jeff Clark who had foot speed and mobility, could stay out of danger, really moulded Harry Wills into an incredible fighter. Um, I actually think that Harry Wills, you know, I rate him as a top 10 heavyweight of all time. I think his incredible career, losing only properly one fight in nearly nine years. You know, up until Jack Sharkey in 1926, like I said, he'd only lost one fight by DQ to Bill Tate in 1921. And prior to that, his last loss was by a fractured wrist. So if you count the G DQ loss and that loss, okay, he only lost one legitimate fight in just over 10 years, and that was the 19th round knockout loss to Langford. After that, his two defeats, one was with a fractured wrist, um, the other was a DQ loss. Incredible, incredible fighter. Um, where do I rate Wills against many heavyweight greats? Um, I wouldn't put him quite on Mamad Lee's level. I think he's certainly on or above Marciano's level. Um, I think a fight between Wills and Marciano would be a tough fight. Would be a very tough fight. Um, you know, because Marciano was a true pro and he was a very powerful fighter. But, you know, at the end of the day, to close out, I'll go back to my, you know, original point. Harry Wills is... One of the great heavyweights, you know, when you look at him and his physique um, and his record, the massive fight runs he had um, without defeat, his incredible record in the Coloured Heavyweight Championship ranks, only three defeats in approaching 40 fights for Coloured Heavyweight title. You know, the massive fight runs with um, Sam Langford, um, everything else. We are looking at a pinnacle. Now, interestingly, you know, Harry Wills had over 30 fights against many world titles. A number of those are against Langford. And he also had nearly 30 fights against all of fame opposition in his incredible career. And interestingly, you know, in terms of the experience of his opponents, Harry Wills' opponents over his entire career averaged 71 fights each. Okay. All of his opponents' records averaged out over his career come to 71 fights each. Now, what that shows is that he's fighting men who are very, very experienced. Okay, very, very experienced fighters, you know. Um, and partially, like I said, this is what came down to make Will such a formidable fighter. You know, in his career, he fought nearly 700 rounds in his career. Nearly 300 of those rounds were for the coloured heavyweight title. Um, he actually fought nearly 340 rounds against men world titles, and he fought virtually almost 300 rounds of his career. So nearly, you know, nearly a half of his entire career in terms of the rounds he fought, he had all of famous in the ring with him. You know, I mean, that is really quite incredible. You know, many of those rounds were against Langford, others were against McVeigh, um, Jeanette, etc., etc., Jack Sharkey. But, you know, Harry Wills were an incredible fighter. You know, could he beat all the heavyweight greats? No. Would he beat a number of heavyweight greats? Possibly. You know, I don't think he would. I think he would struggle to beat um, Jeanette McVeigh and Langford in his prime. He may get some results against them, but, you know, I don't really put him on the level of Sam Langford. Sam Langford and McVeigh showed, you know, in their earlier fights, and Jeanette did, that Wills could not best them easily um, when they were, you know, less away from being past their prime. You know, it was just a sad coincidence that Harry Wills was coming into his prime 1917 when, you know, Jeanette and McVeigh were well past the prime and Langford had now left his prime as well. And it's a shame that Harry Wills didn't come around five years earlier so we could have had not a quartet, but a fivesome, including Johnson. And also, I think a fight around 1915, 1916 between Harry Wills and Jack Johnson would have also been an interesting fight. Me, personally, I think that Harry Wills wins that fight. A, because that version of Johnson was not the version of Johnson who destroyed Burns, but also because it's about styles. I think that Harry Wills' style of using those long, thudding punches um, and maintaining a range, firing heavy straight lefts and rights, firing big uppercuts from outside, using his feet and his mobility and his athleticism. 
You know, for 1915, 1916, Jack Johnson, I just think that style is all wrong. The same reason why Joe Jeanette gave Jack Johnson some very, very tough fights and even was licking him in one fight until Johnson fouled Jeanette in the second round and got disqualified. But ultimately, Harry Wills, could he have beaten Dempsey? You know, that that is actually not an easy fight again. You know, Dempsey were nearly 6-1. You know, Wills only had a few inches over him. Wills, to me, was the bigger specimen um, physically and, and lengthwise. But Jack Dempsey was a brutally fast, formidable puncher. You know, he was an absolutely brutish puncher. You know, Dempsey in his prime from 1917 to 1923, you know, he was a murderous puncher and he had speed. And Dempsey also had commitment. You know, a bit like Sam Langford and McVeigh, Dempsey would step into Wills, winging shots, trying to knock him out. You know, so a fight between 1919 Wills and 1919 Dempsey would have been an absolute great battle, I think. You know, could Wills have withstood Dempsey's fierce attacks? Could Dempsey have got inside Wills's long range and those powerful knockout uppercuts and hooks and straight thudding shots from outside? You know, it would have been a remarkable battle. Who wins that is up to all of us to argue about for decades um, and I've no doubt centuries to come. But interestingly, one thing that cannot be debated is the greatness of the Black Panther. Incredible CV, incredible fight runs against some of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Incredible multi-time record as coloured heavyweight champion. Incredible run of defences, making over 20 title defences off that belt. Just an outstanding fighter, an unheralded fighter who I think deserves more respect and credit. But, you know, there's one thing from me on my channel, you know, the great Black Panther Hardy Wills will get the credit he deserves for all time. I'm out.